Hello, we're here at the Koji meeting in Amsterdam. Um, and we're here with Fadi Sharara, Dr. Sharara from Western Virginia, which is near Washington, D.C. And Dr. Ferrara is, of course, a well-known IVF specialist, runs probably one of the best clinics in the country. Actually, looking at SAR data, it's always been my opinion, it's the top five clinics, maybe the top three. Hard to tell at some point, really, when you look at the data, but, but really up there, and a very meticulous clinician and, and sci scientist. Um, uh, he just presented at the Koji meeting about uh, a topic that's all important for all of us, uh, about how to avoid multiple pregnancies um, and, and what are the insights from a fertility specialist. So, Fadi, tell us, so what, what, what are your conclusions? So thank you, Jacques, for uh, your introduction. Pleasure. We definitely uh, create more multiples than we should. Uh, the basic message is we have to push much more towards single embryo transfer uh, for the vast majority of patients. Uh, it's the right thing to do. We're not meant to carry litters uh, <laughs> one at a time. Anyone who has had children will tell you that one is a lot of work, two yep. at a time is uh, pretty hard. Yep. Beyond that, it's insane. Yeah, personal uh, experience. Yes. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you, you can tell. Uh, I've rarely had a patient who have twins come back to ask for twins, actually. They all want to say, oh, please okay. make sure that it's not a twin. Uh, they don't listen the first time when you tell them, please. No, exactly. They, yeah. they don't. They just, they think twins are oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, they think, you know, two for the price of one. Right. Um, you know, they're paying out of pocket. They don't want to deal with it. It's yeah. like instant families, uh, be done. Uh, the price to pay, obviously, they don't think about the other the financial, the physical, the emotional tolls that uh, a multiple pregnancy takes. And many marriages just don't survive this. This is a lot no, of work. No. And you know, unlike other countries where there's extended families that can help, um, you know, in, in the US or in Europe, it's, you're just basically the husband and wife or the two partners, and yeah. this is a lot of work. Uh, the, the other thing, they just don't think about the financial implications down the road. It's uh, you know going to school at the same time and then to university at the same time. So it's a major hit. And that's assuming they get children that are normal. Right. Uh, so obviously, uh, multiple pregnancies are associated with significant morbidities and potential mortalities. But morbidities for mothers and for the babies, like hypertension, diabetes, uh, you know, early delivery, very, very early delivery. Uh, and those kids can be born with cerebral palsy or eye, eye issues or multiple other organ uh, damage. So we want to try to eliminate this and just go shoot for one. So any same person will tell you the outcome should be a single pregnancy at a time. Right. Uh, even you know, even IVF, IVF pregnancies by themselves have, even singletons have a higher problems compared to spontaneous pregnancies. Yep. So we don't want to add insult to injury by having this. So clearly the message when, and mo most of the higher uh, order multiples are actually because of us. So, um, and that has to do with putting multiple embryos when you're trying to do this. Uh, in my opinion, there's no reason at this point why you should not transfer a single embryo for the vast majority. So, so, do, so sorry to interrupt, but do, do you, so what do you tell your patients now? Because I, I know you're in the Northeast of right. America, and, 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 and there, the, 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 the really the statements you've made, the observations are right. The patients come and ask Absolutely. for this. So Absolutely. How, how do you respond now? Well, uh, I mean, I, I did a, a prospective study, actually, try to convince people to go with one by removing the financial issues. So giving them free medications and free storage and free for freezing one. for the embryos um, to convince them to go with single embryo, and 30% refused. They want their twins. Wow. They refuse not because the pregnancy rate was the pregnancy rate is identical. Right. What differs is the incidence of twin pregnancies. Thirty percent on the people that refused, and one point five percent we had this one case. This would be unheard of in Europe. This yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course. I mean, this is the transatlantic divide. I mean, yeah. in Europe, it's socialized medicine. Yeah. The mean age is about four years younger in Europe than it is in the U.S. Four years. And they come in, and if they their IVF cycle fails, they don't throw themselves off the roof of the building. <laughs> they come back and say, why can I start yeah, again? Right. Versus in the US, other than the 15 states out of 50 that have mandates, 
uh, they have to get the money to pay for this. And IVF is very expensive, as you know, in the US, the cost of IVF, the cost of drugs. So this is what complicates the issue. Uh, so now with the introduction of actual of PGS that has really allowed us to test embryos, get a single euploid embryo and transfer one at a time. And over the past three years, I've seen the uptake in PGS increase from about 15% to over 50%. Patients are now coming in to ask for PGS to say, I don't want to get pregnant and miscarry. That's gonna, you know, other than the traumatic event that a miscarriage is, uh, they lose about three to six months in the process before they come back to do another cycle. Right. So, uh, and and I, the, I know there's a big transatlantic divide between the U.S. and Europe in attitudes towards PGS, but um, I think in the U.S. The, it has already taken off, and yeah. I don't think that's gonna yeah, reverse. But, but you think? Our European colleagues are going to follow that, or are, are they going to maintain their criticism of PGS? Well, they in can. I, I think ultimately they will. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a uh, maybe potentially a, he a healthy debate to have until uh, there's, uh, you know, I think in the US we have enough evidence to show that this method really works. Uh, we're not, until we make sure that we're not actually throwing um, away embryos that potentially are normal. I think this is really the biggest issue that Europeans have a hard time with. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we overcall in PGS. No we, question. We, we have to. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, absolutely. If, if you don't, then yeah. you have more trouble. Than absolutely. Than other. absolutely. Uh, you would want to find a, a base that you that you exactly right. Yeah. That doesn't happen in any test. Correct. So, so yeah. Um, it's how so, you define so, mosaicism. So, that's, so, that's your call rate. Well, exactly. That is yeah. the middle group yeah. uh, becoming more interesting now right. because we, we find out all these, these small differences right. that, that tell you, well, maybe this embryo should go before another embryo. Correct. But, but what do you do with the, ana the clear aneuploidies? Are you now suggesting, well, in IVF, when you don't do PGS, you transfer those? Right, we, right. we if, transfer if you don't those do PGS, you're putting them in. But now you have a diagnosis. Correct. The diagnosis is not 100%. Correct. I think it's around 97, 98%. Right. Norbert Kleitscher thinks it's, it's, it's more like 50% or less. Yeah. So, so his data in the, in the Vitali Kushner study that was recently published, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a nice paper mm -hmm. actually. It's a small data set. Um, but, but how do you deal with that? Should we freeze anaploid embryos and we test those? A excellent question. I mean, now with NGS, this is what we're doing anyway. So we're biopsying and we're freezing. And we get the result, yeah. you know, a few days later, then yeah. we sit there with the patient and say, this is what we have. Yeah. If we, as long as they have at least one euploid embryo, this really, this discussion doesn't really materialize as much. It's the aneuploid embryos. So if you get one with multiple aneuploidies, no one asks about this. The ones where the question come in, if there's, mosaicism or we get these segmental aneuploidies that right. a lot of people don't even know what that means. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, so we have the patient called the genetic counselors that they talk to them and then they decide at that point. So if they have a euploid embryo, that goes first. If there's nothing and there's a mosaic embryo and patients cannot afford to do another cycle uh, with proper consent, yeah. uh, I think it's worth transferring these embryos because they have led to life right. birth. Right. Significantly lower chance, a higher chance of a miscarriage, but these potentially, you know, if that's the only thing you have, you give yeah. it a shot. So, so the segmental, segmental aneuploid is right. you we push don't. towards the back of your Correct. choices, Absolutely. right? Whereas the, Absolutely. Whereas the, the more gentle mosaicism or something like that, Correct. You, you keep to the front. The mosaicism is probably very, well, we know that's it's normal. common in the trophoblast. Sure. Uh, that's perfectly. how an embryo corrects. Right, right. And uh, uh, there are some, there's some functionality to it, mm -hmm. probably. Um, uh, that haploid cells by these assays are usually not picked up. Um, NGS doesn't see doesn't see that haploid, right. and we think it's very common. Yeah. Um, so it's just becoming more interesting, I think. Um, the technology but the question is improving. You know, you know, yeah, well, significantly. Uh, yes, it is. So now with NGS, we don't know what four or five years from now we may get a method that's even you know better than what we have right now. But aren't, aren't you afraid with NGS that you know too much? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, what we're doing right now, I think, is a big experiment. We're collecting all this data, uh, and we, we have this data that we would have to see 
uh, as we collect more data, what this means in terms of live birth down the road. Right. Uh, this is a huge experiment in progress, right. and this is what you, the Europeans are very uncomfortable about, yeah. that we're basically uh, throwing away potentially normal embryos yeah. or, not, or transferring embryos that are called normal and they could be abnormal. However, the miscarriage rate is significantly lower when you do PGS afterwards. Yeah, but, but that doesn't exclude the possibility that you Correct. still, if you're still, well, discarding embryos that you call them viable, that are viable that's and normal. No question. So, so that, that is the issue. But, that, but that's the problem with the method yeah. itself. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, and we need to look for solutions. Yes. So, so one question, a final question I have is, so you have done all this, so how, what's the ratio of number of embryos you transfer across the board now? One for the vast majority. Yeah. So every now and then we have patients that come in and they insist on getting two and I mean any patient that asks for more than one I actually give them a 22 page brochure that deals with the problems right. of mothers and I tell them I will not yeah. do a transfer until you've read right. this and if you still insist on getting two then you basically you consented for this and I'm not going to babysit right. I tell them this uh, so um, 85 percent 85 to 90 percent go with a single embryo there are some who still come in and say, I still want my twins, again, based on the study that I did. So even with PGS, however, that decreased it yeah. from about 30% to about 10, 15%. Yeah. And so, and so your, your counseling of these patients must have changed over the years. Totally. Are you now pretty confident? Yes. You're not worried about yes. Because I see a lot of doctors being worried, nurses being worried, talking patients out of transferring three embryos or two embryos. Yeah. I mean, it, okay. it's, it's a crazy yeah. thing to no, do. No, no, that, that, that yeah. quantum yeah. shift we did a uh, few years back, I mean, we introduced single embryo transfer back in 2004. So we're very comfortable in transferring single embryos. Yeah. BGS has made us even more comfortable. And uh, the patient, it has made the patients more comfortable with this. Before you were putting two blind embryos, you didn't know how many, I mean, even in younger age groups, up to 40% could be unemployed. So now when you're putting one, they feel much better. And, and even before, I used to ask patients, what's the worst call you can get? That sorry you're not pregnant or congratulations, but we may be dealing with twins. And it's amazing how many now are calling, are saying the, the twins one will worry me much more. Right. This never used to happen two, three years ago. It, there's something that has changed, at least in big urban cities, okay? Uh, rural cities, they come in much younger, it's a different story. But now they're more comfortable with the single embryo uh, story. Right. Well, I think this uh, it's a great, it's, it's, it's progress. Uh, it's just wonderful to hear how you have to felt this in your own clinic. And having brochures ready for the question is it, just amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy talking to you. Pleasure. Always. Thank yeah, you, Jeff. Enjoyed it.